Back for Blood is one of the games I've been looking forward to playing all year, and the launch is just around the corner. Right now, players that are able to play Early Access are killing Ridden by the millions, and I got a chance to play some more of the campaign mode. I've already technically reviewed other parts of the game, such as the gameplay mechanics and the game overall, but until now, the general story has been locked. This video will be an honest review of the PC release of the entire game, or at least the part that I played. This will be completely spoiler free, so I'll be using only footage from one of the levels that were available in the beta. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, and hit the sub bell for future video and stream notifications. First, I'm going to go over what is essentially the same from my experience in the beta. Gameplay wise, everything is the same. The weapons and gunplay feel amazing, the ridden are still terrifying. The gameplay and the world of Back for Blood still looks and feels beautiful. The characters, now that all of them are available, are fully playable and have their unique abilities. A few of my biggest complaints unfortunately made it to the final release. I am not a huge fan of how supply lines work, but they still function the same way, where you are forced to buy cosmetics in order to unlock the cards behind it. Also, weapon attachments are still permanent, unless you find a loose one in the world to swap with. I'm almost certain I saw the devs mention that this is only temporary, so maybe it will be updated at a later time. Other than that, I'm absolutely in love with this game. It is definitely a huge improvement on the Left 4 Dead formula. The game is everything I was expecting and probably going to be one of my favorite games of the year. Next I want to talk about the new stuff available with the early access release. I assume this is also the launch day version, but there could still be a day one patch. From what I've played so far, the story is shaping up to be a good one. The cutscenes that were added really put into perspective what's going on in the world of Back 4 Blood. They introduce you to the 8 main playable characters, Fort Hope, The Situation, and the other side characters. The cutscenes were very well made and helped stitch together the story of the game that was available in the beta. They provide more context as to the story so far for Back 4 Blood and what to expect. I'm really hopeful we get a really explosive ending to finish off the main story. Finally, there is probably the biggest concern that I have with a game like this. Other than the fact that the bots were almost useless in the beta, my biggest concern was longevity. Without mods, games like Left 4 Dead and Back 4 Blood are only as replayable as the game allows it to be. Without fun mechanics, a good story, and enough to do, not a lot of people will keep playing weeks or months down the line. What makes Back 4 Blood different is it adds longevity with the card system. Cards offer what a typical perk system can do in many other types of games, but with the way corruption cards work, the game will allow for completely randomized missions. With every run of an act, mission, or section, the corruption cards will change the game and how it plays. This allows for replayability, which is something a lot of games lack. As long as new cards, corruption cards, and the occasional new act to play are released, the game will last relatively long. If mods are ever introduced, the game will probably last a decade. It's still very early to tell if that will be the case, but there is a lot to be hopeful about. Every aspect that I played in the beta is basically the same, functional and buttery smooth. Everything I'm seeing in the story, the gameplay and replayability makes me want to play more. There is so much potential and the only limit is how weak your player deck is. There is a lot to do with campaigns, solo campaign, PvP, deck building, supply lines and more. To finish off, I'm going to give this game a solid 9 out of 10. It has a lot of promise and potential to grow. It is incredibly fun. The story is very interesting so far and definitely worth playing. With the promise of DLC later after launch, I expect new items, cards, and more to be added to the game, which will hopefully fix any lingering issues. My biggest issue, of course, is supply lines, but it's not the end of the world. Or is it? Anyways, now that the Ridden have found me, I have to end this video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, and hit the sub bell for future video and stream notifications.